Welcome, Davide. The stage is yours, and these beautiful people are waiting for you. Hello, everyone. Today, I want to start with like a little class, a little master class on feedback. Um, this comes from my experience. I worked across uh, very big multinational corporations, uh, very small startups, and at the same time, both in consulting for many years and currently in automatic uh, on products. Uh, this to say that I hope that there is something for any one of you, regardless of where you're coming from. If you feel too shy for questions live today, uh, this is my Twitter handle, Folletto double L double T. What I want to start is that we need, in a way, to relearn feedback. And the reason I'm saying this is that feedback is something that we feel is natural. Um, but so we realize that, well, I can do this, right? But it's also a skill. It's a skill that can be developed. It's a talent that can be grown. And it's something that you really, really want to grow in, uh, in your team. So let's start uh, laying the foundation. There is one very interesting aspect and was researched uh, and by Kahneman. And he was noticing that a lot of people think that negative feedback works uh, better than positive feedback. And there is an interesting thing about this, which is um, the concept of regression to the mean, which means that even a person is constantly growing, like in this diagram, if you're performing worse than your average, and I give you a negative feedback on that, it's not because of the negative feedback you're going to improve, right? It's just because you're regressing to the mean, you're going back to your average. And at the same time, if we're giving you a positive feedback for something good you did, it will look like that you're actually the next time, it's like you're going to perform worse. So we have this kind of bias in perception that when we give positive feedback, the person is get going to get worse. And then we give negative feedback, the person is going to get better. But that's not about the feedback. It's about regression to the mean. It's absolutely normal, but doesn't tell anything about the feedback you gave of how good it was. The second reframing I want to do is around the ideas of positive and negative. Positive and negative are overloaded terms. And specifically, we think of positive and negative as something that confirms and negative something that um, corrects something wrong you did. But what it really tells us, even if, of course, there is some correlation, positive and negative tells only about how we received it. We can get some really go good and solid criticism and feel good about it because we know now what to do next. So in a general sense, it's usually considered a negative feedback, but in practice, I'm feeling good about it. So is it negative? So let's try to avoid these two terms as much as possible. And the way I want to reframe the pieces that compose feedback um, are three. So one is content, then we have the attitude and how you approach feedback, and the form you use to give feedback. In terms of content, the reframing I want to make is about doing two things. You want to give what is usually considered positive feedback, but I want to call it confirmation. You're giving a person the confirmation that they're acting well, and they can do better, and that's, that's the right direction. At the same time, you don't want to criticize them. You want to adjust them. So you want them to improve on something. So the criticism is fine, but you need to give also a direction that helps them to adjust in the right way to go. The second aspect is sh a shift of attitude. This is tricky because sometimes we have some unconscious uh, fear about ourselves. So we are trying to look better just by criticizing someone else. This, by the way, is absolutely normal. It's human. But we need to start recognizing this. We need to start to recognize that we need to shift to give good feedback from this kind of undermining kind of feedback to a supportive kind of feedback, to something that builds the person. And this is more commonly known as radical candor. Uh, if you never heard of the concept, um, I would advise you to uh, check at least the, the video by Kim Scott. And it's a great concept. It's exactly this idea that you want to give feedback that is truthful and at the same time that is supportive, that is genuine. And I'm saying this particularly because we also have another bias that we think that rude means candid. 
this is something we need to hammer in our mind, especially when we evaluate the feedback that someone else is giving. Sometimes we see very rash, um, rash and hard feedback, and we say, well, what they're saying is true. True, okay, it may be, may be good content, but there is, it's not a synonymous. You can be totally sincere without being rude, and this is exactly this concept of being sincere, exactly this concept of being of caring about the person receiving the feedback. And the third aspect is form. Now, this could be a big topic on its own, um, but the general idea is that communication styles are different. Even if we are coming from the same place, we work in the same company for a long time, we are very aligned together, we may have two entirely different communication styles. So we need to try to match and adjust to see which communication style the person receiving feedback is better adjusted to. And at the same time, there are language barriers. If you're working on big companies or across multiple countries and nations and languages, there is naturally differences because we interpret individual words maybe with different weights. Maybe we learn different the words in different contexts. And of course, cultural differences as well. But probably the best tip I can give you here, because we cannot list all the things that could happen in the form, is that uh, we need to assume that misunderstandings happen. Um, we are, I recently had a conversation about, you know, how um, earning and like quality of life relates to that. And there was a big discussion that came out because actually we weren't disagreeing on the ideas, but we weren't disagreeing of the definition of what a rich person meant. And that's funny because once we clarified what rich meant across this group of people, now suddenly we agreed. Oh, if you mean rich in the sense, then yeah, you're right. I agree with what you're saying. So these are the three components that would disassemble feedback, and I hope they will help you to reframe the way you structure it. But then let's shift to the next step, which is what to do with it. So what, when, uh, what to do when we are actually giving and receiving it. But before that, I want to introduce another aspect that is often overlooked, which is the idea to ask. Asking feedback is something that needs to be developed. So how, how can we ask for feedback? Because asking allows us to be and receive uh, good feedback in return. So the first thing is be explicit. Be explicit about the kind of feedback you want. Never introduce and never ask Something like, can anyone give us feedback about this? Do you have feedback about this? Because what's, what, what kind of feedback do you want? What are we talking about exactly? So first of all, which level of feedback are we talking about, right? If you're talking, for example, about design, I may be asking like a general overarching flow analysis. I don't want to get too much into the details. So it's better if I tell you that I don't care about the details right now. We'll t care about that later. If I'm doing maybe a code review, Similarly, maybe I can ask you, can we review the architecture right now instead of getting immediately into the details of line-by-line -line code review? So this is essential because it allows a better communication, a more efficient communication. And so you want to ask a specific question. The more specific the question, the better feedback you get. But even more importantly, in the question, you don't want to prime the answer. Well, sometimes you may want, but priming means that you don't want to suggest them what kind of answer you want. You don't want to tell them, well, between these options, which one do you prefer? I prefer this one, right? This happens, it may be phrased differently, but you want to avoid a kind of structure, a kind of sentence that will prime them. Uh, and sometimes, of course, you want to say, well, given the analysis I did, I think that this is the best solution, but please give me that. And that's, again, a way to frame the way you are asking for it. But now it's clear that you're coming from a certain angle. Finally, a bit of a note about anonymous feedback. Um, I would generally suggest that anonymous feedback shouldn't happen. If you're creating a good environment, if there is a good team, if there is a safe space there, um, usually anonymous feedback isn't very effective um, because you have an open discussion, you can talk together, and you can approach even difficult topics together. Sometimes, however, may be necessary. You can do anonymous feedback by proxy, so by giving feedback to a third person that then anonymize for you, or there may be a tool for doing this, like an anonymous survey. Um, regardless, try to adjust and use anonymous feedback as little as possible. Of course, 
usually the threshold here is if giving feedback can be perceived as dangerous or threatening for the person. Now, now that we know how to ask, we can move instead to on how to give proper feedback. The first key thing surprised me when giving feedback is again to ask. It's again about asking. I've noticed many, many times that if the same, exactly the same feedback, if you introduce it, it by, can I give you feedback? It has incredibly, incredibly more power because you are creating the setting. With a simple question, you're creating the setting, the, the other person starts being prepared, it's very unlikely they're going to say no, but maybe they will. And they maybe say, well, you know what? Now it's not the right time, let's talk tomorrow. But this, in a way, gives power to the person you're giving feedback to. Another important aspect, uh, I'm not going to differentiate too much between the two, but it's important for knowledge, um, that some feedback may be about the thing you're building, about the project, about the product, about the tools, anything. And sometimes the feedback is about the individual. Sometimes you want them to grow. Sometimes you want them to improve. Okay, these are two different kinds of feedback that are, have a slight difference and it's important to acknowledge when it's one and when it's the other. Uh, it may seem obvious sometimes, but it's better clarifying this. First thing, be timely. Being timely is probably one of the most important things in giving feedback. When something happens, you want right then, right now, to tell them. You want to be as close as possible to the event so you can discuss on the actual practicalities of it, of actually what happened. You don't want to never generalize it. Be always as specific as you can, address it. This is especially valid if you're talking about, of course, uh, an individual, if you are helping them to grow. The second aspect here is, again, be timely. Because nobody likes to rework. If you're midway through a project and you're questioning the assumptions of the project, it's very unlikely that the team is going to listen to you. But this is absolutely normal. Of course, still do that if there is a critical issue that wouldn't allow you to ship or w there is a major flow. But in general, um, this happens more often than you may expect. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were talking with, the, with a person who was an amazing um, researcher. And she was telling me that, well, giving constant feedback to teams and nobody was listening. And we review, okay, when you did it, when it happened. And we noticed that every single time be was because it was never at the beginning, never in the planning, but it was always midway through a project. So of course there wasn't attention for the team because the team couldn't take it at that specific moment. So timing here is again important. No, they don't, didn't want to do the work again. And third, be timely, again. This kind of timely instead is in a positive fashion. If something good happened, you don't want to kill it. If you are having a great meeting, you have a presentation and it went incredibly well, you presented to all the vice presidents and all was good and you're walking out and your colleagues come to you and say, yeah, great presentation, but what? You killed it, right? Please give them the time to enjoy the moment. You can't wait a day. This is something, okay, of course you want to be timely, but in that situation, maybe wait one day, right? Because that's good for them to enjoy the moment. It, it went well, right? So there is no need to constantly push for it so, so suddenly. Another aspect is be explicit with those assumptions. Tell where, the, where you're coming from. Because different angles are incredibly useful, especially in, uh, when we promote diversity. People coming from different angles are very, very useful but you need to be clear what assumptions are coming from. You need to be clear that, oh, if I think about this kind of user, then this is my suggestion. And also ask the stupid questions because it happens so often that in a team, everyone thinks that there is a stupid question. Nobody's willing to ask it because everyone should already know it. And so that thing is never clarified. That thing is never put on the table for clarity, for synchronization to help everyone to know it. So of course, ask the stupid question. Don't be afraid of it. Actually be proud of having the courage to ask that question. 
This is a very simple trick, especially if you're in writing, and it happens, happens also often. Change all the you when you're talking about a product to this thing, this suggestion, or this code, or this design. It's never about your design, what you did. Try to depersonalize it if it's not, of course, about the person, right? So I'm saying this because maybe the concept, again, the content may be great, but if you're trying for your feedback to be well received, do you want to put them on the defensive? No, of course. You're trying to make them better. So try to avoid putting them on the defensive, try to be about the thing you're making and not the individual. Sometimes it is personal though. <laughs> Sometimes we're not talking about the product, sometimes we all want the person to grow. And I found out over the years that the best way to approach this is that regardless of the, the person, how the person thinks about it, maybe the first time you're about to talk about it, assume that they know about the problem and assume that they're working on it and assume that they're having a hard time about it. I think that this is the best way to put you in the right mindset to approach the person with respect and be tactful about it. Um, another advice here is like the idea of never stop at criticism, never stop at the negative, but always provide a way forward. Never say like, oh, you know, this code is bad or this design is bad. You can say, this design is bad, this is the reason why, and here's a few ways you can choose between on how to go forward. This is, again, incredibly powerful because you're helping them to go in the right direction. And of course, you can discuss on the criticism, on the su suggestion, but then again, that's a great way to go forward. And I don't know how many of you have heard of the idea of the shit sandwich. Raise of hands, right? This is incredibly debated. I've seen in many situations people say, oh yeah, that's a great way to give advice. And people are saying, oh, that's an awful way to give advice. My opinion, this is neither. In the sense that you need to start adding an element that is time. And this is important because wh often what happens when you do this kind of management reviews, 360 reviews, uh, or like quarterly one-on-ones with your manager, what happens is that you're getting all the criticism all at once. That's not very useful, that's not very motivating. And so what they're saying, well, if you use the shit sandwich, you're also giving positive feedback, so it balances out. Well, actually, no. Because the problem there is that it's not really about the format. Is that if you wait so long and then it happens and you get all the negative feedback together, the positive feedback at the time will be felt as fake. As truthful as it could be, it will be felt as fake. So it's not about really the format. It's about the fact that you want to give time. You want to give, as we said before, timely feedback. And if it's timely, then you are building up over time. And in the moment, you're fixing that, you're correcting them, you're motivating them. And then, of course, you can still have the general reviews because sometimes some things come out only a patterns. And so you need a repetition and then you can do a summary at some point. But still, this is the best way. This is because, uh, this is why the shit, um, the shit sandwich doesn't really work. It because it's not about the concept of how you give feedback, it's about the time when you give it. And this has been proven. If there are research over research that great teams are giving themselves great feedback, positive feedback, motivation to one each other. And if we dig a little bit more about the content, again, confirmation and adjustment, we see that confirmation is good because among all the possibilities, all the things you could do and all the things you could focus in your daily work, I'm confirming that the direction you're going is good. It, of course, gives a boost to morale. It can be helpful for imposter syndrome, if you know, the, the idea that a lot of people like feel imposters in their daily job and they feel that they're going to be uh, recognized as imposter the next day. And in the end, this builds trust. And at the same time, when you work on the adjustment, this again builds trust because it removes the downside. So you are uplifting from above and you're pushing at the same time from below. So you're helping the person grow, you're helping the project grow. And of course, time is a variable, but what you're doing here is they're trying to build 
a safe zone, a safe space when this discussion can happen? Does the person feel safe enough to approach even difficult and critical conversation? And to create this, especially if you're a team lead, if you're a manager, you need to admit your own errors and you need to accept the other person's errors. The more you start doing this, the more the environment is conductive and positive. Say sorry. This is, can be very hard for a lot of people, but it's the first step to create this kind of environment and to grow yourself to be a, a better person giving feedback. And one aspect is also give agency. So the, way, the reason why we ask, do you want feedback, is because you're empowering them. You're asking for their consent. You're asking them if they can act upon it. So you're giving power. And in the end, this, the, the, the end of a safe space is, again, the same concept of growing and building trust. Now, how to receive feedback? Well, let's start with the team, right? In the team, first thing you can do Let's assume the feedback is not great. So it's someone that hasn't listened to the first part of this presentation. So first thing, breathe. Try to split it. Try, it's not about you. Try to separate, OK, these were personal attacks, and this is the objective part of it. Great. Now that I have the objective part, I can focus on that part. And then I do another thing that is splitting the problem that they're mentioning from the solutions they're giving. Because some people, they, when they're giving feedback, they just give the solution. They say, oh, you should be doing this. OK. Why? What's the reason? Why are you suggesting that? Right? We discussed it before. So if that doesn't happen, you have to do the extra work in separating what is the problem and what is the solutions they're mentioning. Again, if they don't do it, you have to do the work yourself. What are the assumptions? Where they're coming from? What's their angle? This is especially interesting because uh, as often, as especially as designers or as developers, we have a little background on the works in working, for example, of the businesses we are working with. And sometimes the perspective of a person that is working to grow the business is very different from our perspective. So it's important to try to reframe and see where they're coming from. And often it's a healthy angle, and it's good to incorporate it, because, I mean, we're trying to grow our businesses. And also pair up, if, especially if this is a hard feedback. And this works, of course, better if you're communicating in text, because you can review the text. Uh, it's great to compare with someone else, because, you know, I've read this comment that they gave me. Feels bad, but what do you think about it? Am I taking this too personally? Um, and so you're seeking by this external approval or negation. Um, you're able to grow yourself because you're able to get this more objective perspective and you're able to find an angle to improve. Ooh, we, are, we work in, in an open source community, so there are a few things that in the open change. Because when you start opening up, when you start talking about large communities, where especially there is again in open source where everyone can come in and do what is called like drive-by drive -by feedback, Again, you want to start taking a deep breath, maybe even two or three, <laughs> and approach it like research. Like, like when you're doing a survey, imagine that you're doing a survey, you're collecting the data, and you're analyzing it. So you approach it like that, some feedback you analyze it in a quantitative way, some feedback you analyze it in a more qualitative way, and so you review in, in aggregate form. And since it's difficult to assess it specifically the background and the assumptions each individual is coming from, one thing that can be more easy to do is to review which group they belong to. Is this feedback coming from a business owner? Is this feedback coming from a blogger? Is this feedback coming from a developer? Right? These feedbacks are all good feedback, but their angle is important to understand how that needs to be um, appreciated and evaluated. And sometimes it's also important to see which context the feedback is happening. It's very different if the feedback is happening on GitHub or on track, and it's very different from a feedback that is happening under a blog post. And it's again very feedback, very different from feedback that could happen in person. So this changes and reframes a little bit. 
And especially if you're working in a team and collaborating with others, which I hope you are, um, sometimes you're not the right person to answer. Sometimes in your team, there is a person that has a more informal perspective that is the best person to do it. And so even if you are the person that actually read it and is participating in the conversation, maybe you can ask, can you review this and answer here? And this is super helpful. And another thing you want to do is to acknowledge everyone. Because they're giving feedback, they're giving your time, they're giving value. And what you want to do, of course, maybe there are so many of them, you cannot personally relate to each one of them, but it's still important to acknowledge every and each individual feedback you're receiving. Of course, not all feedback is equal, again, because of assumptions, because of background, and of course, the loudest voice, that doesn't necessarily mean they are the, the most important. So these are all assessments you have to do. But still, it's very important to acknowledge each and every one of these feedback you're receiving. And I'd like to wrap up with, uh, with a quote from Bruce Lee, which wasn't just a martial artist, but also a philosopher. And to motivate and invite every one of you to grow to be your best self for you and your team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Davide. That's a, a, a fantastic start to, to the day's talks and, a, and I think a, a great um, guide for, for all of us uh, working together on a project. Uh, we do have time for questions. We've got around 15 minutes. It's very good timekeeping today. Um, uh, so if you do have a question, we have mic runners. Could the mic runners just wave, please, to so everyone know? So we've got a couple down here at the front and at the back as well. Um, I think I, I understand we are mic running, actually, this morning. Okay. I understood we were... Okay, well, we could mic stand as well. There you go. Flexible, agile, on our toes. There we go. So um, if you have a question, the mic stands are just there. If you recall how we did it with uh, Matt yesterday afternoon. Uh, if there are no questions on the floor right away, that's good, because I get to ask questions then, <laughs> which is super awesome. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm really, uh, really interested to start with the Daniel Kahneman quote. Um, I'm not sure, not everyone might be familiar with Kahneman's work, but um, it's fantastic, very um, practical, cognitive psychology work, and he's been working for a long time, and many of the sort of ideas of psychology. Are there, are there any other particular aspects of Kahneman's work that you thought, ah, that, that's really been useful <laughs> in feedback that, that you might want to point people well, at? Well, as you said, it is a lot of work. So yes. I would probably suggest just to check out one of his, uh, one of his books or one of his talks. There is a lot of material around. Yeah. And yeah, the, it's, as you said, it's very, very yeah, useful. He, I so think he did definitely. a TED talk about two, three years ago, which is well worth looking yep. out for. OK, now we have questions on the floor. Yes. Hi, Davide. I have a Hello. question. I was sitting there with my colleague, Kate, and uh, she suggested I ask you. Uh, you mentioned how it's important to acknowledge all feedback because people have bothered to do that. What if they're like trolls? <laughs> that's all. Yes, that's an excellent question. Um, and it's probably a talk on its own. <laughs> so trolls are difficult in the sense that um, the general advice is you don't want to feed the troll, right? And that's absolutely fine. And it works in very small scale, though. It's something that I if it's just an individual happens on your own blog, you can pretty easily moderate them. We currently have a technology issue in the sense that this doesn't work at scale. A lot of the tools in, uh, that are provided today don't provide really uh, great management for when it's not one troll, but it's a coordinated uh, group of people that is attacking. So in this way, unfortunately, there is no specific uh, feedback on how you can handle it. Um, ignoring internally is usually the best approach, and usually different tools have different ways to try to just remove them from the conversation as much as possible. Um, this is very dependent on the platform, and I hope in the future that, that there will be a better approach to do this. Um, but unfortunately, we are in the middle ground right now where we don't have a really good solution for this kind of scale attack. But th the original advice of ignoring uh, is probably the best. 
at a small scale, at least. Thank you. Okay, we have another question. Hey, Davide, I love this talk. Thank you for doing it. Um, so sometimes I have found that when feedback is really important to give, as in we're trying to avoid a negative result, um, it can also be a really bad time for that person to hear the feedback. So I was wondering, like, where, on which side do you err? Bad timing or avoiding a bad result? <laughs> okay, we are getting advanced here. <laughs> so the first thing is, depends on how well you know the person, right? Uh, if it's someone you don't have any background, you don't have any way to assess how the feedback is going to be received in detail, uh, I would probably err on the side of delaying it uh, and finding the right moment. The more you're comfortable and engaging with the person, the more you're basically able to find the right word. Because some, I would say that uh, a way I think about it is that everyone has their own fears, everyone is acting upon them, and everyone has a different way, level of awareness about them. So if you know what their fears are, how aware they are of their own fears, then you can more easily manage and give good feedback without hitting these walls. Um, so in this sense, I think it's regulated, the timing is more regulated by your knowledge and your engagement with the individual. Um, the communication channel also can be uh, a way to review it, right? So doing that in text, uh, sometimes it's great for some people because you're actually able to pace the word and give time to think. Uh, but sometimes for other people it's absolutely worse. So you, again, you can adjust and see if this person is better by voice or in person, or if it's better in, in the text form. So I don't think there is a general answer to this, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a great question to ask because we can s start creating this awareness of when is the right moment. Thank you very much, great question. Thank you. Yes, another question? Hello. Um, I had a question about giving motivational or constructive feedback to also avoid a negative result. So you give this feedback, they react, and they start doing better. As a, as a leader of people, do you say, oh, great job, and then they revert back to their previous um, habits or like how how long do you monitor and keep providing feedback until it's not a problem anymore do you have advice there because my initial reaction is to say this is what I want and I want you to keep doing this but I don't know if that's the right approach mm -hmm. no absolutely I mean the mindset is absolutely right and I think that there is there is something to say there about, um, again, the knowledge of the person, unfortunately, um, but also that the positive feedback you want to give is always, uh, probably should, this is something I should have said in the presentation, it probably needs to be as specific as possible. Because if you're just saying, oh, that's great, or that you're doing great, that's not specific enough. Because as if you start repeating that, it's, it becomes void, right? So good positive feedback is a positive feedback that is specific on the thing, the exactly the thing they did well. You need also to be aware of the regression to the mean that I explained at the very beginning. So it may look like that the next time they're performing worse. That's not necessarily because the feedback didn't work. It may be just a matter of how they're growing, okay? So I will definitely set a longer time frame, and also depends of how big the problem we're talking about, right? Uh, if you just, oh, can you adjust how you write, like the syntax of, of your code or how you write, uh, like, oh, you need to add uh, full stops at the end of every sentence, you know, that kind of thing. It's probably basic and probably you would expect to happen right the next time and to never repeat it many times again. Uh, if it's a more structural change, then uh, you probably are, are already aware of how difficult it is for the individual to approach that change. And that's the kind of change I would probably monitor over a long time. The way I would approach a more, like a deeper change and a deeper transformation and deeper growth in the person is to let them to set the goal. So if you try to be explicit, because it's something that you want, right? So it's, it's a goal you want, 
and you want to share with them a goal. So, okay, this is what they want. Let's set a goal common that we both agree it's valuable. Let's set a time frame and let's see how it happens and how long does it take, if it's working well, and then you do the check-ins and so on. So this is for bigger kind of transformation and change. So I will always try to, in this case, it to be as explicit as possible uh, in setting these goals. Does it help? <laughs> very much so, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Do we have another question from the floor? Yes, we do, actually. Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a question about your opinion. When the feedback is used in the sense of manipulation with coworkers or, you know, when a manager uses feedback to either hold your ambitions down or how to overcome that personally or how to recognize it, some kind of advice. Thank you. Yes, that's a tough one. Okay, so the most practical advice I could give you in this sense is find a third person. Find someone else that is uh, maybe as close as possible to the situation so they can assess it, but as detached as possible so they are possibly objective. Uh, because in this way, they will allow you to review every feedback you're giving, you're receiving, to say if you actually want to receive it, or if it's just manipulation. So this is more, for, m for me, it's more of a protection, because you don't want uh, your clarity and your well-being to be influenced by these kind of techniques. And also, the more you develop this ability to recognize when this is happened, the more like protected you are because awareness here is super important. Then, once you start like developing this, it becomes more challenging in the sense that if it's your manager, then how you can like correct that, right? How can you help your manager? How can you manage up to them, right? Um, and here we start getting into a difficult territory because sometimes, as plainly as I can say, is change workplace. Uh, sometimes, and this however needs to be assessed because not uh, all HR is created equal. If it's a good HR, you can refer on the side to them. Um, if it's bad HR, again, probably you want to give more anonymous feedback maybe. Um, but this becomes a little more of, of a challenging situation. And I don't think it's strictly about feedback because then you are <laughs> handling a more of an organizational problem. Because if it's happening with you, it's happening with all the people that are interacting with this person. So, yeah, I'm afraid that I <laughs> it jumps to a different level there. I hope it was still useful as an answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. We've got time for maybe another question or two. Yes, sir. Yeah, hello, hello, David. Uh, first of all, th th thank you for an uh, amazing presentation. It was very useful and uh, very, uh, very well presented. Thank you. Now, I am d I'm wondering, uh, do you have uh, s some opinion or perhaps uh, some experience? What, what, makes, uh, what makes a person actually leave uh, feedback? For example, uh, we, are, we are working in, a, in, a, uh, in the open as you said, mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, uh, if, if we are uh, creating a, a plugin or a, or a, um, or a, a WordPress theme or anything else, uh, we have a large number of people downloading it, uh, using it, uh, and um, uh, some people like it, some people uh, w w would like to, uh, to improve, but only, only a, a relatively small uh, 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 percentage of, of those users actually uh, uh, bother to leave a reply or a, or a feedback. Uh, uh, do you think it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a matter of uh, only uh, like uh, extreme opinion, extremely good or, or extremely bad, or is it a matter of uh, culture? If if this uh, if this person is coming from a culture where uh, it is uh, more uh, more common to 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 be open to to uh, to give feedback, uh, mm -hmm. ju just a few words about that and. Uh, Yes, no, that's a, an excellent question, especially in this context. So the first thing I would say is uh, great also that you gave me an example. So if you're talking about a plugin or something that is, uh, for example, an app on the App Store uh, or a theme, and you receive, you, you know, there is the open feedback form and people are just leaving comments. So the first thing I would say is that most of the negative feedback will be there in the sense that if you are having a positive experience, 
it's less likely you're spending time to go and find and vent and rant about it, right? So this creates already a big bias toward like negative feedback. I'm using negative specifically here, um, even with the disambiguation I was doing. So the first thing here I would suggest is to try to find source of feedback that are more neutral. So for example, if you have enough users in your plugin or in your app, start asking for feedback inside the app, right? To everyone, not necessarily all the people that have a bad experience. And here, I would say, don't also try to manipulate it. There are some applications, for example, that ask you, oh, are you having a good experience? And say, yes, so give us feedback, okay? And if you say no, they say, okay, next time. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't work either, right? So you want to be as sincere as neutral as possible, uh, and you want this especially to balance the feedback that is happening in these open spaces. Because as I was mentioning, the, the context where the feedback uh, is happening matters, and how it's triggered and how people get there. Now, I can say there are certainly some, some cultural differences. Um, and I'm not saying necessarily like country or language or whatever, but there are some individuals that are more uh, like easily there to, to give you feedback and to help you, but I, th I would take this more in the sense of the ask part of my presentation. So if you are able to ask for feedback in a structured way, then you're going to get the value. And this is especially important if you're building a product of any kind, because if you're listening only and you have only as a source, source of feedback these kind of open spaces where you're getting most negative feedback, then your product, if you're relying on that, your product uh, roadmap is likely going to be influenced by these things. And you're not actually listening to the positives, to the people that are actually wanting you to grow and your product to grow in a good direction, right? So try to offset it as much as possible. I hope it helps. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much, Davide, for, for the answer, for, for all the comments, and to you for the conversation and for a, a fantastic presentation. It's got the day off to a great start and I think it's gonna help us all in our work and in the community as well. So thank you very much. Let's thank Davide thank again. You.